welcome back to Jody Hughes Music. In today's lesson, I'm going to teach you a new role. And this is one that when I first learned it, I kind of struggled with trying to get it up to speed because I didn't have anybody to teach me the role pattern or to, to watch them play it. And I was just going by sound. I couldn't quite figure it out. So that's what we're going to talk about today. This is more of an intermediate type role. And it sounds a little bit less like your typical bluegrass role. But before we get into this lesson, I just want to say thank you to all my Patreon members that have been supporting me. And thank you to all of you that have been subscribing. Lots of new subscribers, lots of new views. Man, it means the world to me. It keeps me just pumped up about all this you know keeps me fired up if you've not already done so please visit my website jody hughes music i've got a new beginner bundle over there i've got a new single string course coming up here very soon in the couple in a couple days and it'll be under the video it's going to be over on my teachable site it's going to be almost an hour's worth of single string stuff so you don't want to miss that but let's go ahead and get into this video basically what we're going to do is we're going to do this we're going to go one three two one with our right hand so one three two one here it goes now, the problem is, is if we try to do this twice, we get, a, we get a repeat of one finger. That middle finger, and I'm exaggerating it so you can see it. And you'll see this. And it's kind of limiting how fast you can do this. And it kind of sounds herky-jerky, if you know what I mean there. It's a little picky kind of string noise kind of sound. So how do we solve this problem with this roll pattern? And I really exaggerated that. Don't do that, but I want you to see what happened there. So watch again. So what happens is I hit the first one, my middle finger. And that second one is now with my pointer finger. So it's middle, pointer, pointer, pointer. So every other one is your pointer finger. I'll do it really slow. And you just want to practice this at first. Just don't get your left hand involved yet because it's already difficult enough. Just practice doing the right hand. This, this roll here is pretty difficult to get all the string noise out and all the pick noise. It's going to take you uh, quite some time to get up the tempo on this one, but uh, practice just the right hand. And I would also say, I'm not going to say all the time, but it's not a roll that I play back here a lot. You know, if I'm playing like a... It's not that kind of sound. I mean, I can, but it's a little, you know, it's more of a... More of a kind of a peaceful, very flowing, almost classical type sound. So let's go ahead and get into some left hand stuff with this pattern. Okay, so now that we've went through the right hand, let's bring the left hand in and try to coordinate the two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just grab an E minor chord here. Hopefully you know this, but if you don't, I'm on the fifth fret of the first string with my ring finger, the fifth fret of the second string, and the fourth fret of the third string with my pointer finger there. So that's an E minor. And really remember the whole point of this roll is to capture melodies on the first string. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab E minor, and then my pinky's gonna come up to the seventh fret like this, and I'm gonna get this. And this is gonna be a stretch, but just try it. Uh, and basically what I'm doing is gonna go practice going back and forth. And each time I start, a uh, I start with middle finger, but each time I go on that top note, I'm going to be on my pointer finger besides the first note. Pointer. 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 Every time. Now, so I'm moving up an E minor up to that note. You can also move this back to the F sharp there. And the way I do that is I simply just bar um, four, five, and four, and now uh, just that one finger's down besides the bar. And so now I can move back and forth between this and that. This is kind of branching off my cool E minor licks, if you will, my uh, cool E minor lick video. So you can do all sorts of stuff with this roll pattern. I always tell my students it kind of sounds more classical than bluegrass to me. So 
So there I'm doing it twice on each one. You can move back and forth even faster. Now, this can be applied to any chord shape that you can, you know, take notes and move around. So let's go up to the old familiar G chord there at seven, eight, and nine. And now I'm gonna do the same roll. So this time I just move that pinky up to here and I get that suspension. And now I'm gonna move it just a little faster back and forth. And by the way, this works for any diagonal. So, you know, if you're up here on, let's say D, Likewise, what I did earlier, remember, I moved back one, so I'm gonna go up one, back, and then this time I'm gonna bar. It actually looks just like that shape, but it's a, it's a G major, but it's actually a suspension because now the B is gone. Uh, but anyways, you don't need to know all that theory stuff. You just need to know the cool shapes, right? So you got this, it moves up to there, back, and then to here, all while doing that roll, and that captures this little kind of melody going on in the background. I'm gonna go to E minor. Back to G. Now what if we wanted to go to D? This is something, I think I heard Bela Fleck do this, I can't remember. Remember Tony Trisco one. You can take a D here, right? And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go from here up to the ninth fret of the first string. It's like a D6 or something, and then a D7. And now I create a little melody on the top string doing this with a D. So I'll go through something kind of fast here just so you can hear the chord changes. Thing you want to do as long as you, you, know, you grab a chord and you're moving the top note around. That's the whole point of this roll is to create melodies on that top string. Um, you can move through things faster. One of the things I teach my students, and you'll find this in one of my Whiskey Before Breakfast arrangements, is on the B section. I do this lick. doing is I'm just driving through chords D, A, G, F sharp minor, E minor, D, A, D, and it's, it's basically like a descending scale. But we are using chords and we're using this nice little roll. pretty difficult to get up to speed. But as you can hear, it's got a very nice kind of classical different type sound other than just kind of a pure bluegrass roll. I use this also in my arrangement of Grandfather's Clock on the first string. Basically anytime you got a melody you know, on, on the first string, so like in Grandfather's Clock you've got this. So you know, that melody on that top string necessarily have to do it twice. I'm there, I'm kind of doing the roll and then hitting two quarter notes and then the roll, two quarter notes, two quarter notes. But if I wanted to, one I use a lot is I go back chromatically from the minor, the B minor. So you have the B minor, you just slide down. So 
So this role can be used quite a bit. Alan Shelton, uh, he used this a lot in the background, like in backup. Uh, you have your little diatonic chords here, like G, A minor, B minor, and you can move back and forth between. like and it appears like I'm moving through lots of chords but the band would just be playing the G chord and I'm gonna be going and this is a nice little uh, kind of in, in the music theory we sometimes call this planing meaning they were moving through the diatonic chords there and so like if I'm if I'm just over playing vanilla G I can put it in those extra minor chords to create some interest there so a lot of times if I'm just on G I'll do that's B minor, 12, 12, and 11, 10, 10, 9, so 9, 8, 7 there, and you get this, and, you know, and I sometimes have to come out, create a whole nother measure, that's what that little single string is. use this in backup it's not just lead but basically anytime you have a melody on the first string this is a fantastic little roll to go through uh, sounds great on minor chords in particular uh, let's see you got something where you have like a A minor and you can hit the I'm, I'm doing that on purpose I'm, I'm accenting it necessarily always do that but it gives a, a, a different effect you know sometimes you want it to be smoother um, I think it was I can't remember Don Reno somebody they use it on a little rock getaway too you know you have this that song it's been a while since I played that one, but go check that out. You might hear that in the... That's a, that's a cool little tune that uses that little roll. You hear Don Reno or somebody like that play that in Little Rock Getaway. Go check that out. All right, so if you got something out of this, hit that old like button underneath. Uh, and if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. I would love to absolutely hear from you. Tell me if you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. You know, if you've never seen this roll before and you have any trouble with it, let me know. It's a little bit more uh, what I would call, consider an intermediate roll. Um, but you guys, thank you so much for tuning in. It keeps me kind of pumped up and fired up about banjo picking and sharing and teaching here on YouTube. If you have not already done so, please visit my Patreon site. It'll be over here on the screen. Uh, I'll have the tab to this uh, for those of you that are supporters over there. And also, please check out my website, Jody Hughes Music. I got some new things blasting away over there. I'm going to be updating that. And I also got that old single string course coming out here soon. And the link to that uh, over on my Teachable site is going to be underneath the video. But you guys, happy picking and take care.